Peter is the sort of guru behind Mediograph um, and has been in this area of digital asset management for uh, digital and non-digital files for as 20, 30 years more, hey, Peter? Um, and we met probably 20 plus years ago. Pretty, well, pretty close, like coming right up on 20, yes. Probably 2008 or so. Um, yeah. that we met and at a at a conference in New York. And ever since Peter has been helping us in various ways. And so it's a great pleasure to have you, Peter, to showcase uh, what you want to showcase about Mediagraph and showing particularly the power of AI in that regard. Since we have a small group of people here, maybe we can just get you to understand their needs. And That's so, an excellent idea. So maybe we, uh, um, we can stop yeah. sharing the screen and Angie and Jordan can introduce themselves and what they are particularly looking for and what are their needs. And so we can actually respond to their needs um, directly. Perfect. Okay. Angie, why don't we start with you? Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for that. I um I'm the Director of Development at St. Andrews College in Grahamstown um, and Archives falls under my uh, department. And as you can imagine, uh, we are about, we're 170 years old um, and <laughs> managing archives is just an absolute nightmare of note. And so I'm, so I'm looking for two things. One is a, yeah, is a photographic and other uh, archival artifacts management system. Um, so what we've done is scanned, you know, literally thousands of old photographs in, but we're literally leaving them in a Google Drive under folders at the moment, you know. So to have this metadata um, and the ability to have tag trees, et cetera, et cetera, really does appeal to me but I but I, but the but the big problem of course is how does one get all of this information and data um into a system such as yours but that's another story um but then secondly um what I was really interested in is the face identification capability um so you can imagine we have we have thousands of photographs which are you know we don't know who these people are in the in these photographs and you know if we had the ability to scan um photographs of all old boys into the system when they were at St Andrews College yes um, which we have of course you know so you could have somebody who was at St Andrews College in 1980 um, and to be able to somehow miraculously um, throw throw a photograph at the database, you know, another photograph, and this person may be thirty years older, um, and for the system to be able to tell me who who's in that photograph would be absolutely incredible. So yeah, that's where I'm coming from. Fantastic. Great. Thanks, Angie. And I was yeah, I can show you examples of that. And uh, yeah, Jordan. <laughs> Thank you. I was chatting to a, an, another school the other day, and they were saying the nightmare of putting together the school magazine every year, and you don't know who the children are, and or, and or you've got a number of names and different spellings of names yep. associated with all of these children, and the nightmare of managing that. And I said, I've got the solution for you. This is really going to help you with that because you can do a controlled vocabulary of the name associated with the face. And that runs all through their school career and into their, the old boy career. Yeah. Jordan, do you want to tell us? Hi. Um, yeah, I think likewise, I'm, I'm just very curious to hear about the the identification um, of faces because that would save a lot of time um, and I think we also yeah if you don't know all the people we work with a lot of volunteers um, so it would just really assist with um, with marking certain things um, yeah and then just generally always curious about about what's available as far as digitization and and archives and catalogs and all the rest 
And Jordan, Great. just remind us which organization you're from. So I'm I'm from the Holocaust and Genocide Center. Okay. Um, so we've we've had our own our own journey um, yes. with our archives, but yeah, like I say, just um, it is a nightmare. I think we all know this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm quite like say curious to just hear about yeah anything that makes the job easier. Peter, over to you. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to start with just a, a very clean demonstration of face tagging for one individual. Um, I happen to be working on the archives for my old school uh, where I was. Um, uh, we don't say old boy, but that's that's what I am. Um, and uh, and I've got uh, some of that that material also that that I've been tagging and have have run into some of those same uh, issues there as I'm starting to build that up. Um, these happen to be pictures of my father and uh, none of these uh, let's let's take a look in the tag tree. Um, there there are two that are tagged um, with just person keywords, uh, not face tags. So if I open it up and I look down into the faces area, I see that a face has been recognized, but uh, it has not been identified. And in this case, what we've got is a, a high school uh, yearbook photo from the early 50s. And so uh, because there there is a, a keyword already on this, this file, uh, I can... Um, uh, when I open the face tag and uh, face tag panel and put my cursor in, it's going to say, "Hey, I I see a keyword attached to this to this uh, file that uh, does not have a face tag." So that's probably the one that belongs right here. And I just click it, and that is now becoming the training image for the entire uh, account. And um, and so then I can now go back into the account as a whole. So I just click view all and I'm going to see everything. And uh, most of the pictures in here are are pictures of him from a little baby up to an 80 year old man. I can select all of the photos and run the face tagging. Um, and uh, that will identify, uh, it turns out, most of these as him it, it will get it'll get most of the pictures correct uh even though it's a wildly um uh disparate uh ages and for me to see which ones have been face tagged i'm going to open my filters panel i'm going to make sure that we're refreshing since we've just run this process and it it finds 36 files that have his face tagged. Uh, I only did one of them manually. The rest uh, were all recognized by uh, the algorithm. And so from that one source image, it is finding him in all these different phases of life. And this is exactly the um, the problem that uh, that was outlined uh, by by Angie of uh, we have we have you know a yearbook photo and we want to be able to see all instances of this person and um, it it really does feel like magic and it is a wonderful thing for you know these these uh, the vast majority of these are scanned images um, there might be a few born digital. Um, no, I think they're all scans, and uh, and so it it makes it easy to identify. I'm going to switch over to Peter. If you if you knew yeah. of other other ones, other files that were him as well, could you add that to to the? Thank you. Yes. Um. So uh, we are we are looking at all files, but we are filtered on the ones that have uh the face tag for him. I can also reverse um, that search 
and say, show me, show me everything that doesn't have uh, that tag. Uh, and, and so there were, you know, there were a couple that were missed. Um, uh, very young, uh, for some reason, this one, you know, so it, it's not perfect. So there were a couple, a couple that were missed. Uh, and then there were some articles. There was, you know, this is a, a document. Um, the, uh, his name appears in it. And that is something that, uh, when we look at it, um, when we look at the AI, um, uh, optical character recognition, we can see that his name has been found. And uh, I can take these pictures that were not um, that were not identified and uh, also add them to to his name in the tag tree. Let me refresh that. Uh, so that's going to now include both the face tagged items as well as anything else that I might want to say is about him. And uh, here's another, um, uh, it's a, it's a photograph of an article. His name appears in there. If I, you know, want to see, um, I can, that, that will also be produced in search results. Um, but I can add these, these other textual documents. I just happen to know his name is in these other ones. Uh, uh, and I can add all of those documents as well so that could be you know anything from a powerpoint to a pdf to a, a word file or a, or even a csv and that's and not, so that, that's not interfering with the face recognition training it's just that you've associated with those files with that tag yes that's correct <laughs> and so that that allows um it allows you to build a much more a uh, comprehensive um, profile of whoever a person happens to be. Uh, and then there's another thing that that's uh, quite useful is that it's possible to add a description um, to the person tag. And in this case, it it uh, you know has a few details about his um, about his career. And as well as, in this case, a, a link to uh, a death notice um, that uh, all of this information can be grouped and added um, to this person tag. So you can you can enrich the uh, the collection with all kinds of really valuable and interesting um, uh, information about the person. And that becomes searchable. And if I'd like to switch over to an account that has a lot more stuff in it so that you can see how that uh, that becoming searchable is so so useful. Um, but uh, questions from uh, Angie or Jordan at this point? Um, yeah, I wanted to to ask, and I'm not not really a tech person, um, but is is there any kind of learning on the system so or is it yeah so if you kind of tag enough photos does it begin to then pick up on um the maybe the younger ones or the older ones or is it just really based on a single image that you put through okay um yeah so a couple of things you can uh we used one single source image but uh you can also add up to 99 additional images of a person. Uh, so I could have, um, and what I would have, what I would have done in real life would have been to take the, the baby pictures that were not recognized and add those to the training set, which is, which is really easy to do. Um, and then that would, would enhance the training of, the uh, of the AI to know that oh well this is a this is also him so um, uh, this uh, this picture was one that was not recognized and um, we can see that that it hasn't recognized him it does have the the person tag because I dragged and dropped it onto that tag 
But if I say, well, this is an, you know, if, if it was important for me to be able to find other pictures of him as a baby, then I can um, uh, uh, set, add that um, uh, as a face tag and then add that to the training set by clicking that one button. And now that is now helping to further train the system so that it will recognize him. And, you know, we could do that with, uh, with the other, the other pictures that were, um, not recognized. So there's one. And again, we can, uh, we can add that to the training set by simply pushing the training button. And then you can always go and see, uh, what faced training exists in the system in the manage panel by going to faces and it shows you the person uh, it tells you how many taggings there are, and it tells you how many training faces there are, and you can click it and see what those training faces are. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, sorry, I had another question that I can't remember. Oh, no, just um, obviously with the photos, if there are other people in, then it it might also pick up on the other people, so that will hopefully bring bring the families yeah. together if we need that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll show you um, that get that makes it really interesting when you start putting those things together. In this case, this is also tagged with my grandmother. And uh, so I can I can train her as a person as well. Um, and then I can can also add her to the to the taxonomy to make that name very discoverable. And and so now in the in the tag tree, uh, there's uh, she's now in in the tag tree as well, and and I can can uh, organize that. You know, if I wanted to uh, put them in there, and let's say I want to make a group for family, I add a sub tag and and call it family, and that allows me to um, to group these tags in ways that make sense. And this is where I'd like to go over to the other account because. There's um, uh, about four thousand tags in that other account, so you can you can start to see how you can can navigate that information. So, so this is my personal archives, and uh, as I said, there's well, so we have seventy four thousand files in here. Uh, the the system is quite responsive. They you can uh, organize very large groups of files into um you know into a hierarchy that makes sense and let's open that up and and say that uh so you can see that i've organized people into different uh different groups so there is a family group and you know this is this is several branches of my family and and my wife's family and uh i can as i said organize it however i want and and so I can go find uh, the people who are in in the Krogh Gallagher branch, and you know there's there's my father, and with a with a single click I can find all seven hundred and nineteen, uh, including those things I mistagged apparently. Um, uh, but we see we see lots of pictures of him throughout different phases of life, but this gets interesting because. Uh, this is searchable according to the description. So um, when I search on Helen, I'm going to see the uh, the pictures of of my grandmother, which I can, I can just see everything that's tagged with her name. And I can also, uh, when I click on her name, I get what we call the the entity view, which where you can have a poster image and you can have um, a description, and again you can have have uh, links that that can help you inform. But we're also seeing Frank Dent Blackstone. Now, why are we seeing him? We're seeing him because in the description it says who he is, uh, the the father of Helen. And so when you're searching in your tag tree, you're not just searching the name, but you're searching a description. And so if I want to find, um, 
people that are tagged with my old school name, uh, I can can find that by just typing in Landon. And um, and then these people are, uh, you know, la- have been tagged with Landon class of 1979. So I can even search on that if I'd like. And um, that's going to find all the pictures I have uh, identified from uh, my classmates. And this is more than half of my classmates here. And and uh, I can go down through the uh, through this uh, set of pictures and look for for different people. I can also uh, click on uh, a person. Let's look at Chip. And I want to see what other people are in pictures with Chip. And so I can see that these are other people who have been tagged in the same picture uh, as Chip. And so I can easily say, well, I want to find pictures of Chip and Mark. Um, and, and then I can see that, oh, there are also pictures of Chip, Mark, and Tully. And as I click through this, this narrows down to just the pictures that have Chip, Peter, Mark, and Tully. And it also is telling me there's a picture of Craig in this group as well. So this this lets me really discover what's in, um, discover where the pictures of one person can include other people. And this is just one of the ways you can start to navigate through the entire uh, the entire collection of images and um, and see relationships. And also, uh, you know, if you're looking for um, for alumni related to special events, uh, maybe maybe there was a uh, you know a death uh, among the the alumni. Uh, if you if you find pictures with that person and uh, and their other classmates, that's the kind of thing you could potentially send out uh, to you know remind them of the importance of those relationships that you've uh, that that were fostered um, in in the school. Um, and so in, in many ways, Just this say, Angie is, Angie's needing to leave. So thank you oh. Angie, for attending. Thanks, Angie. Happy to. Thank you, thank you so much, everybody. You know, this, this is, this is incredible stuff. Um, I would love to have the software, but I have no idea how I'm going to get all my, all my stuff into, into here and tagged and everything. As I say, I think we need a team of team of data capturers but uh, I have a whole been... school of data capturers waiting for you Angie <laughs> yeah. but I don't trust all of them to do it properly that's that's the big issue it's um mm. it's you know it's garbage in garbage out so you've got to be so careful but it's it's absolutely brilliant I have another question if I can yes. ask it now Please. um because I know when you put some of the tags in some some documents popped up so is it is it tagging text as well uh, or is oh, that just is, previous tags that it picked up on uh no. is is text tagged is that the question um well i mean is the ai uh, can it pick up on on names in text or was absolutely. that from a previous tag no absolutely it um uh you can it does full document search and so if I'm uh, I'm going to search on not a name, but uh, on just a a, uh, a word artificial and we'll see that it is finding files that are tagged with the keyword artificial intelligence. Um, but it is also finding videos where uh, the word artificial uh, appears in the uh, transcript. Uh, which we create automatically on video upload. And you can even jump the playhead of your video straight to where that word or name appears and start playing. OCR is easy to enable. Um, it also, in the case of this file, uh, this is just a JPEG file, and it has read the text and indexed the text, in this case, finding 
uh, the word artificial intelligence uh, printed in in the uh, um, in the image itself, as well as uh, some of these other files. I believe this one's a PDF, and it found the word artificial in the in the PDF and and um, in the transcript that it made from the PDF. So uh, so all of that happens automatically on upload. Yeah, and that's like I say, I'm not. This is not really my field, but the the OCR, whatever it is, which is the the text recognition. Yes. Um, will it pick up things that? Because we, I mean, we obviously have like handwritten letters and things. So would it pick up on the handwriting? And if it's a different language? Uh, absolutely, and um, that is uh, one of the things. The uh, in that one document that I was showing. Uh, that's in here, the, um, that, that, uh, registration for his, uh, nursery school. Um, there's, there's about four different styles of handwriting in this image and, and those were all automatically extracted. So, so, uh, so in that's... other words, um, Jordan, what this is doing is OCR, HTR, which is, handwriting transcription recognition and also it's doing a, a speech to text in in um, video and audio files and how i mean how does the process roll out sort of so does it do if you do the videos will it do the the transcripts first and then it's got to search or it's just does it all at once it just does it at the time of upload and okay. And so um, it all just happens. That's pretty yes. crazy. It, you know, really the most, the best way for you to understand it would be to uh, get a trial account for free and have the Africa Media Online people just upload a sample of material. And, and uh, it's, it's more interesting when you have different types of material and uh, when you have a, you know, not just 10 items, but, you know, hundreds or thousands and, uh, and let it discover what it can discover. And, um, and then you can take a look through it. It's, you know, you're you're looking at this according to material that you don't know anything about. You know, this is this is my stuff, not your stuff. And when you see what it can extract from your stuff and how that becomes searchable, that's when you really get to understand uh, the power of the system. Yeah, and this, I mean, it has to get uploaded onto the system. Yes. Okay. Um, can it just be transferred? If it's digital as well, is that is it easily Absolutely. transferable? Absolutely, and you can um, you can upload whole folder trees, and the whole folder tree would be preserved. So if you have um, your archives in in a uh, folder arrangement that mimics your uh, your archives storage arrangement, you know, shelf box, folio, however you have it. Um, uh, uh, set then that's the way you would see the material um initially that it, it comes in and it it keeps that material so i've i've got my um family archives in these record groups i i renamed the record groups to be friendlier to uh to regular people in my family but you know each one of these is is you know a, a separate um a separate item uh these are all uh, separate boxes of of items and um and so you can you know you can put it in there and and then with just a single click you can find it you can set it to in this case i've got recto and verso in there whenever there was text on the back and so it's right next to that if i want to um i can hide the verso if i'd like so that I'm only seeing front side of uh, of any of these files, but it's it is really nice to be able to to click that and see that that's Dorothy Gordon Donald, uh, 18 months old, and to to see um, uh, so the text 
recognition was not perfect, but not bad. Um, uh, and, you know, we can understand why it didn't realize, didn't understand that that was HG Donald, but I can uh, click that uh, and um, uh, correct that. And then that, that becomes metadata for this file that can live with that file and of course is searchable. Um, so, so it's easy to upload if you have uh, material already in some kind of a folder arrangement. Um, and like I said, you could, you know, you could do as I did, which was to rename my record groups for the, uh, for the access by civilians. Um, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm hoping that this will organize everything. <laughs> Yeah. Because I just have, I have piles of stuff and yeah. Not very yeah. And that's what, that's literally, you know, so here we have uh, 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 almost 900 items in a box. And then as you start training, it just starts to know who everybody is and uh, is able to uh, put, uh, put a keyword on it. So, you know, it's, it's recognizing many, many pictures uh, of my mother from this, um, from this box. And when I start typing, this is another thing that's really nice. Um, you know, we, we push the finding aids to be right up, up uh, front and center. So when I'm typing, I'm getting a type ahead match that says, oh, well, you're probably looking for one of these things. And so I can just click on that and that's gonna show me just the Dorothy Donald pictures uh, that are in um, in in this collection that we're looking at, and th this is really wonderful for people who don't exactly know what's in a collection. Is to be able to type a, a few letters and see what matches there are and be able to then click on, in this case, I could click on this keyword and see the files that have her keyword. And then I can also see that, oh, there's a matching collection name and uh, click on that and see the, uh, the items that are in that particular collection as well. Yep. So that's, that's another really great, for people to discover what's in the collection. And all of that is filtered according to permissions, isn't it, Peter? It is. So when you type something in here, the only results that you see are ones you're allowed to see. So if I'm not allowed to see a picture of Mark Raker, I won't see his name pop up. As, as one of the matches that's there. And that's a thing that um, very few systems do is limit your results to only the material you're allowed to see. And it's it's very frustrating if you if a name pops up and then you were to click the name and you know no no matching yeah. files popped up and you'd say, well, why did you tell me to click that name? Um, so uh yeah no we we quite open open about what we share but it's yeah i mean there's certain things which this would suppose if people don't want it publicly available then at least it's there there's like a say, can there's remain thing. unknown yeah there's a sensitive uh, a sensitivity issue also that that uh people in schools and universities really like um that it is possible, one of the questions that we were posed early on was, uh, let's say a an alumnus or, or a professor has become notorious for some reason, and we would like to hide all instances of that person in our collection. Um, you can do that in uh, just a matter of uh, seconds. I can click on, on the name, well, it's, you know, I can show all pictures uh, that have this this guy's tag in it, I can select all and I can set this uh, to restricted access, block view and download. And if I do that, uh, that will 
hide it from anybody who's not an administrator of the account. And hopefully that's not a thing that you would ever have to do at all and certainly not have to do very often, but we we certainly have have run into that with some of our clients where um, this has been an important thing for them to be able to pull immediately from everywhere in the entire collection that it might be a publicly viewable uh, picture of that person. <laughs>